A girl is walking home alone when a strange man suddenly covers her mouth and nose. The girl struggles but loses consciousness. The girl's name is Nancy and she has just finished shopping with her sisters and is heading home. She was walking to the car park when the car suddenly reversed and scared her. She complains about the driver and picks up her broken mobile phone, not realizing that she has been kidnapped. Nancy wakes up to find herself in the trunk of the car. The kidnappers are playing loud music and Nancy's cries for help are drowned out by the music. Her original mobile phone has been disposed of by the kidnappers. She took out a friend's disposable phone from a shopping trip to the mall and called for help. The line was answered by an unskilled newcomer to the business. Nancy was devastated when she heard that she could not be located. At this site, Jordan, the new operator's mentor, handed over the position. Jordan was nervous. It had been six months since she had last been on the line. A girl who had been burgled had hung up on her. She eagerly calls back. The ringing phone exposes the girl and the kidnapper finds out where she is. Jordan's operational error cost a teenage girl her life. And at this moment she must take on the burden. The leader stepped aside and told her to take a deep breath to try and calm herself down. She reassured Nancy that she needed to calm her down as soon as possible. Jordan needed Nancy's cooperation to find the car that had abducted her. Jordan asked Nancy to look carefully at the surrounding objects to find the unlocking handle, but Nancy could not find it. Jordan begins to investigate where Nancy was abducted and who she is, the appearance and age of the man who abducted her, the color and type of car. She needs Nancy to determine the condition of the road to tell if it's a highway or a surface road, and she needs Nancy to determine how old the car is. Jordan told Nancy that the trunk of the old car had the same rear lights and that Nancy needed to remove the rear lights in the tiny trunk. Nancy tapped with a roller brush until the tail lights fell off the car. Next, Nancy reached through the hole and waved her hand vigorously. That's when the 911 call center also picked up a call. It turned out that a woman driving a car had noticed something wrong with the vehicle in front of her and had given the police the road number and the license plate of the vehicle. The vehicle's license plate was a white Ford belonging to an elderly man. When the lady heard this and went to check the vehicle, the kidnapper sensed that the neighboring car was watching him and he rushed off the highway. Jordan asked Nancy what was in the trunk that could be used. A bottle of bleach, two buckets of paint, a screwdriver and a paintbrush. Suddenly Nancy had another emotional breakdown. It turned out she had seen a shovel and she couldn't help but think that her kidnappers were going to bury her. Jordan had to change the subject. And Nancy, desperate for survival had to pull herself together. She poured the paint out of the hole, spilling the white paint onto the ground as the vehicle moved. And soon the bucket of paint was used up. A kindly man stopped to tell the kidnapper that his trunk was leaking paint. Realizing that Nancy was not listening, the kidnapper suddenly increased the throttle and the paint poured out of control into the trunk and the mobile phone fell into the paint. Luckily, the phone was still able to hold a call. The kidnapper got out of the car and opened the trunk. He accused Nancy's hair of being stuck in the paint and brought a cleaning agent to try to clean her hair. At this point, a voice rings out and it's the nice man, George. The girl has a screwdriver to her face. The man threatened her that if she made a sound, her face would be ruined. Kidnapped by her kidnappers, she struggles to survive. Her spilled paint is found by strangers, and now she is being threatened by her kidnappers. After the kidnapper and George exchange words, George returns to the car but remains suspicious. He is about to call 911 when the kidnapper finds him. He smashes the car window with a shovel and beats George severely. The kidnapper blamed Nancy for the murder. The kidnapper took George's car, and he hissed in anger from the car. At this point Nancy's phone had not been found and she was now stuffed in the trunk with George. At this point George suddenly woke up and felt very uneasy about what was happening to him. He screamed for help and Nancy tried to stop him but failed. The kidnapper heard the noise and got out of the car and opened the trunk. He stabbed George to death with a screwdriver and threatened Nancy as a last warning. Nancy is on the verge of despair and before she dies she wants to leave her family a few words. Jordan reassures her and promises to save her. Nancy fumbles for George's ID card and is able to trace the car that was taken. Meanwhile, the police ran fingerprint analysis on the detergent left behind by the kidnappers and they quickly pinpointed them. The news of Nancy's kidnapping is shown on TV and the kidnapper is nervous that he has to fill up the tank quickly and escape. That's when Nancy discovered a button in the boot of the car that led to the back seat. But she is stuck and asks the gas station employee for help, who has a knife and asks the kidnapper to step back, as she was about to open the door. The kidnapper frantically poured gasoline on the employee, then turned on the lighter and was instantly engulfed in flames. Nancy, who was stuck in the seat, was not unconscious by the kidnappers. The police searched the kidnapper's home and found that Nancy looked like the kidnapper's sister. 
By now the kidnapper also knew that Nancy had her mobile phone with her. Jordan warns the kidnapper, whose words instantly give her the creeps. The operator heard the kidnapper's voice and she was instantly shocked. The voice was clearly that of the man who had murdered the young girl in her home six months earlier. This was not a sudden incident but a serial killer. The police searched the cottage where the kidnapper lived as a child but found nothing, leaving Nancy's whereabouts a mystery. Jordan was advised to go home and rest, as the chances of Nancy's survival were very slim. But Jordan is still determined and listens to the recording over and over again. Jordan enters the kidnapper's house alone and tries to gather as much information as she can. Suddenly, a loud noise caught Jordan's attention. It was the background sound of the kidnapper's location at the end of the recording, and she was about to walk over to him when she stepped on something. She shone her torch and noticed something was wrong. There was George's ID on the floor, which meant that Nancy and the kidnappers were nearby. She searched the floor and found a cover. She opened it and saw that it was a basement. She tries to turn on her mobile phone to inform her colleagues but it falls down and Jordan gets up the courage to climb down. Suddenly she hears a coughing sound and it's the kidnapper. She rushes to hide. Suddenly the door opened and the man looked lovingly at the doll in front of him. He pulled the doll's hair off and there was blood running through it. It was not a wig, but a human scalp. Then the man buried himself in the hair and took a deep breath. He opened the fridge and there were several scalps in it. The woman was shocked in the wardrobe. Suddenly, the man looked into the wardrobe and the woman shut her mouth in horror, afraid that she would be exposed. The man sniffed hard at the clothes, just a door away. All Nancy wanted to do at the moment was pray that the kidnapper would kill her. But the kidnapper said that hair needs healthy blood to be well maintained. He wanted to scalp her alive. Suddenly, the kidnapper was knocked to the ground. Jordan tried to untie Nancy, but the kidnapper came to his senses in a flash. Jordan was then held down by the kidnapper in the water and was about to lose her strength when Nancy cut the kidnapper's face. Jordan barricaded the door and told Nancy to run, and as they were about to escape, Jordan was almost pulled off by the kidnapper. The kidnapper was still trying to catch up with Nancy when she thrust the scissors right into the kidnapper's waist. The kidnapper pulled out the scissors and tried to hurt Nancy. Jordan kicked him down. Watching Jordan about to inform her colleagues, Nancy stops her. The kidnapper wakes up only to find himself in chains. Jordan walks up to the kidnapper, who has no chance of giving himself up. But he is naive enough to think that the two women are only chaining him up for the arrival of the police. Little did he know what he would face next. Nancy said innocently, I escaped on my own. It was Jordan who found me in the woods. And you disappeared. 